Hello, my name is Joel. Let me tell you about my weird hobby. I officially hold a bunch of Guinness World Record titles for putting things in my beard. Most toothpicks in a beard, most straws in a beard, most golf tees in a beard, chopsticks, Christmas ornaments, forks, paper straws, clothespins, and pencils. Now, I always dreamed of seeing myself in the Guinness World Record book since I was a little kid, but that was just a dream. I never used to actually believe it was possible. Let me explain to you how I got into this weird hobby in the first place. I was working as a trainer where I would teach in a classroom. Sometimes in the afternoon, if the material was a little dry, I would start to lose people. So I started quietly sticking pencils in my beard as I walked around the room just to see who was paying attention. It sort of caught on and it became a thing that the learners would watch for. One of them challenged me and asked me how many pencils I could fit in my beard. Then he said, I bet there's a world record for that. So he looked it up and there was not a world record for most pencils in a beard, but there was a world record for most toothpicks in a beard and it was 3,100 and change. That sounded like way too many for me to ever even think about trying. But then I looked up the guy who held the toothpick beard record only to find that he had the most glorious and majestic beard that I had ever seen. And he was a beard world champion. Yes, that's a thing. So I thought, okay, that record's not possible, so I'm just going to forget about that. But I kept thinking about it. I looked a little bit more into it. I watched a video of him breaking the record. I studied his technique, and I thought, maybe I could do that a better way. Then I started believing that I could do it, and that made all the difference. I found that instead of just randomly sticking toothpicks in my beard, I could actually create a toothpick structure on my face. I worked on it, I practiced, and I perfected my technique, and I broke the world record with 3,500 toothpicks in my beard. So there I am holding up the Guinness World Record books that I've appeared in with my Guinness World Record certificates. I went from dreaming about something to actually accomplishing it, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the concepts that helped me go from dreaming to doing. To help me illustrate that, I want to tell you about someone else. This is someone who's really inspired me with his views on how having a growth mindset removes the barriers that would prevent us from reaching our goals and dreams. David Rush is one of the most prolific record breakers in the world. He holds over 150 Guinness World Records, and he breaks a record almost every week. So you might be thinking, okay, so here's a guy who was driven to break world records, but most of us don't have that goal. Well, the stuff he learned and the stuff that he shares applies to us no matter what our goals are, and I want to share with you some of the stuff that I learned from him. First, I think it's helpful to know some of his background. When he was a kid in elementary school, he was told he wasn't smart enough for a program that he was trying to get into. But he went on to become an award-winning student at MIT. Also, when he was a kid, he couldn't catch a ball at recess, so he was always picked last on teams. Then he went on to break a bunch of world records, including juggling world records, proving that he's the best at catching balls in the world. Let's look at a few of his accomplishments. Here he is breaking the world record for most juggling catches while blindfolded on a balance board. Here he is on America's Got Talent, where he went head-to-head -head with Terry Crews to attempt the world record for most t-shirts torn off in one minute. He beat Terry Crews on that occasion, and he won the world record. He also got to meet me at an event where he broke a record and I served as one of the official timekeepers. Now, I think that he would probably say that that was the highlight of his career, the whole meeting me thing. Anyway, his record that I find the most incredible of all is the fastest one mile run while juggling blindfolded. He trained, he tried, and he failed at this record for a while. He put more practicing, more attempting, and more failing into this record than almost any other. But I want to tell you, when I first heard of this guy, David Rush, who breaks all these world records, I thought, wow, this guy must have all kinds of natural physical ability and talent. What I found is that's not even really the case. He's just a normal guy who's plugged into something that we can all plug into, and that's having a growth mindset. There are two mindsets out there that we can use when we're facing challenges, the fixed mindset or the growth mindset. A person with a fixed mindset says things like, when I fail, that's the limit of my ability. 
I'm either good at something or I'm not. I can't get better at it. I have a limited set of abilities and that doesn't change. I don't want to be challenged. My potential is limited. If something doesn't work out, I'll just give up. If someone gives me feedback, I'm going to take that personally. It's best just to stick with the things I know and the things that I'm good at. A person with a growth mindset says, when I fail, that's an opportunity to grow. I can learn how to do whatever I want to do. Challenges help me get better. My abilities are only limited by my own effort and attitude. When people give me feedback, that's a gift. When I see others succeed, that inspires me. I like trying new things. People who adopt a growth mindset know how to remove the limitations on themselves that would hold them back. David Rush proved that we can learn how to have a growth mindset. Resilience and grit can be learned. It wasn't until he read about and really bought into adopting a growth mindset that things really started working for him and he learned how to soar past his failures. Quoting from him, he said, I learned much more from failures than from successes because failure is the essence of learning. Failure provides an opportunity to improve. What you do with failure is vital. The thing is, nobody likes to fail. Failing sucks. I hate failing. But failing is really important. I want you to think about someone you admire, someone who's really successful at something. It could be a musician, an actor, an athlete, a leader, anything like that. That success that they have, that didn't just happen to them. Their growth mindset and their resilience got them there. If you could interview successful people and ask them the secrets of their success, you would discover a, a pattern of failure and persistence. Now, the person I was thinking of when I said that person you look up to, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris failed at karate at first. He got his butt kicked. He wasn't naturally good at it at all. And he had every reason to quit when he failed miserably when he first tried karate. But I don't think anyone in his life would have blamed him for quitting when they saw how bad he was at it. But instead of quitting, he persisted and practiced and improved. But even then, his success didn't just come all at once. He even failed the first time that he tested for his black belt. But he used all those failures as learning opportunities, and he went, he went on to become a six-time karate world champion. All of that was before he ever thought about acting. Abraham Lincoln is one of the most famous examples that we have about moving on after failure. He failed at business ventures. He failed elections. But he went on to become one of the most successful and universally admired presidents that our country has ever seen. His failures drove him forward. Now, one thing talking about failure has made me think about, would I seek to improve if I had no failures? And after reflecting on this, I know one thing. If I was always successful on my first try, I wouldn't be motivated to try to improve, even if I might have the capacity to improve. You've probably heard stories about how some of the best athletes have been the ones with less natural ability who learned to work harder than the more physically gifted athletes. Some people with all the natural talent don't have to try as hard, and then they struggle because they don't learn to be resilient. To drive that point home, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my world record that was the most difficult one of all. But first, I want to point out that I have what I would call a decent beard. It's by no means a world champion caliber beard. It grows unevenly. It's thinner in some places than I'd like it to be. It's nowhere close to the kind of beard that some of my bearding heroes have, like these guys. But I've adapted and I've grown to make up for what my beard lacks with a growth mindset, including practice, skill improvements, and the belief that I can succeed. Now, after I had a handful of world records under my belt, I asked my friends at Guinness World Records if they would create a new record title for most pencils in a beard. Since I started my beard antics in the first place by sticking pencils in my beard, I figured I should hold the world record for that. They did create a world record for it. They set a minimum to win it. But then they came up with something new that they hadn't done before. They asked if I would go head to head with another bearded contender. We'd meet up in a web meeting with a Guinness adjudicator on the video call. Whoever got the most pencils in their beard would win the record. Guinness would hype the battle, they'd put it on their YouTube channel where it could get hundreds of thousands of views. And that contender, my opponent, was Anatole Ivanow of New Zealand, who had recently won a World Beard and Mustache Championship. 
he also had a beard-related Guinness World Record of his own. Now, his beard was thicker than mine, but I felt confident. I thought, with my vast experience, I'm just going to outbeard him, and I'm going to coast right into the title. When we started our battle, it became clear pretty quickly to me that I was in over my beard. Anatole had a better strategy that worked out really well for pencils. I was employing the same strategy that I'd used for chopsticks and straws, and I thought that would be good enough. It wasn't. When the dust settled, Anatole didn't just win. He destroyed it. He managed to fit 443 pencils in his amazing face forest, which was more than double the amount that I had got to stay in my beard. Now, he was very gracious and kind in his victory, but I felt really embarrassed. I'd put myself out there as some kind of beard record champion, only to be soundly beat very publicly. I believed at the time that the record that Anatole set was so high that I had no realistic chance of ever beating it. I didn't have any hope that that record would ever be mine, and I started picturing Anatole and others swooping in and beating all my records. It was about that time that I picked up a copy of David Rush's book, Breaking Records, and I learned some lessons that I really needed to help me move forward. While he was practicing for the most five ball juggling catches in a minute record, he was stuck. He wasn't getting any faster, and he doubted his ability to improve. The biggest thing that made a difference was reading and buying into the book Mindset by Carol Dweck. Here's what he said. If you had asked me if I could become the fastest juggler in the world before I believed in the power of a growth mindset, I'm not sure if I would have just laughed at you or given you a serious answer, which would have been an emphatic no. But somewhere along the way, I started believing. Breaking a record first requires belief. It requires a growth mindset. I have to believe I can get better at anything. It also requires grit. I have to practice a lot. It requires a regular practice routine. Now, in my observation and in my experience, not only can we learn to have a growth mindset, we have to learn how to do that. Because these fixed mindset attributes, these come naturally. This is the path of least resistance. But when you start learning to adopt a growth mindset and you start reaching your potential, it opens up a whole world of possibilities to you. One more quote from David Rush. He said, none of this would have happened if I didn't have a growth mindset. If I hadn't believed I could set these records even with practice, I would not have improved, nor would I have persevered without a growth mindset. It's not just a feel-good strategy. The research and science back up the claim that having a growth mindset affects results. And even though the strategy isn't just a sounds good, feels good strategy, the results sure felt good. After being defeated so soundly in my head-to-head -head pencil beard record attempt, I had to decide to keep trying, keep practicing, and keep improving. It wasn't easy at first, but I decided to believe that I could come back and win that record. I studied Anatole's technique and my technique to try to figure out why he'd been so much more successful than me. I learned and improved on my approach, and I adapted a strategy for my beard. Then I practiced and practiced until I could beat that record. It took about five months of work before I officially beat that record with 450 pencils in my beard. Believing that I could beat that record was the most significant thing that I needed in order to succeed. Choosing not to give up after my big failure wasn't easy, but believing I could do it is what I needed to move forward. I'm challenging myself to be okay with failing to have a growth mindset when it pertains to my goals, to believe that I can accomplish them and then work toward them resiliently until I reach them and I extend that same challenge to you. Where are you holding back? What are you scared to try again? Where do you struggle to believe that you can succeed? It's time to choose to have a growth mindset and to see just how much potential you really have. Thanks for watching.